Welcome to Adventuring the Girl Life, where we believe life for every girl should be well lived. Each week we'll explore tips and techniques to add more adventure to your world, from fitness and self-care to career building and fulfillment, and even the most mundane parts of life. So buckle up, I'm your host, Jen Whitmore, certified personal trainer, mom of two, lover of hot yoga, and your new partner in adventure. Welcome back, girls, to this fantastic Tuesday. I am so excited for the guest that I have in store for you this week. Now, because we all know that we do not live in a perfect world and sometimes technology just doesn't love us, I hope that you will forgive us, but we have had technical issues with our audio this week. So, we are a little bit echoey and we have tried our best to fix it. So please bear with us and listen up to everything that Cheryl has to say this week because she is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to toxins. So welcome our guest this week to Adventuring the Girl Life. I will not keep you waiting any longer. Here we go. Welcome back to the podcast, girls. I'm so excited to be here with you today. We have a special guest. I have told you that we are going to be having one or two guests per month for this year. That is the goal because I want you to understand that there are women out there who are adventuring this life so well. And I am so excited to introduce my friend Cheryl. Um, We are going to be talking about toxins today. And Cheryl is going to tell us how she has encountered toxins in her life and what she's done to get rid of them, and of course, why this is important. So welcome to the show, Cheryl. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm really thrilled to be here. That's awesome. So go ahead and tell us, um, how did you get into something that's so topic-specific? Um, tell me uh, what, why you started out with toxins. Um, seven years ago now, I, had, I still have my own business. I have a jewelry business. But one morning I woke up and I couldn't get out of bed because everything hurt. Every muscle, every joint, everything. Oh, wow. So I made an appointment. I went to see my conventional doctor. And we ran some tests. And then we ran some more. And then I made another appointment and we ran some more. And finally she called me and said, there is nothing wrong with you. Um, I'm going to give you steroids, but I'd really like you to seek therapy. (laughs) I got news. Something's wrong, I hurt. Right. And so I turned my business over to my staff and started researching. Um, And what I discovered, I I tripped into the functional medical community, and they were running all kinds of symposiums at the time. And I started watching them all, and there were maybe 10 different functional doctors on each one. And maybe one was on the thyroid, and another one was on the gut, and another one was on arthritis. And another one was on skin. And it all kept coming down to leaky gut. Okay, I'm going to stop you real quick. Can you tell us what is a functional doctor? What's the difference between our regular doctor that we go to, that we take our kids to, versus a functional doctor? Well, I've become a huge believer in functional medicine. My doctor actually graduated from medical school at Yale. Mm -hmm. But like many functional doctors, she got sick and couldn't help herself. Okay. So she went for additional certification from the Institute for Functional Medicine. Now, the difference is a conventional doctor listens to you, gets the first symptom, and then a pill comes out the chute, and then the appointment is over. It's usually about six minutes. Sure. A functional doctor wants to get to the root cause. So it's a completely different experience. When I went to see my doctor the first time, she looked at me and said, Cheryl, you're sitting on a pin. Let's go find it. And so the tests she ran were different. The way she approached everything was different. And my average appointment with her to this day is around 40 minutes. I still do a lot of research. So when I go to see her and we sit down, she talks about what she's discovered. I talk about what I've discovered. And then we come up with a plan so that I joke that I'm an onion and we keep pulling layers off of me, 
but we keep getting deeper and deeper into how my body took a lot of abuse for, I, I guess I'll start when I was 63. So um, there's all kinds of things going on in my body that need to be corrected. But here I am seven years later, and I am relatively pain-free. I do have autoimmune disease. I will always have autoimmune disease. Um, so it's always going to be a challenge, and I still get layers, which is where inflammation will hit me, and I can jump seven pounds overnight um, because of the inflammation. But I know how to deal with that now, and I get healthier all the time because of things that we're doing. I am currently going through a mold detox, which is one of the toxins that impacted my life. But what I discovered when I was listening to all these functional doctors was there were some things I could do for myself that would improve my health dramatically. Okay. The first one was to eliminate toxins, and the other was to eliminate my stress. Now, yeah, let's start with stress. I thought stress was a good thing. I thought being chased by a tiger was making me get more done for my business. <laughs> well, guess what? It's not good to be chased by a tiger 24-7. I had depleted my cortisol, not quite to Addison's disease, but it was way down. Okay. So I had fatigue, I had brain fog, I had all kinds of things that were related to not having that hormone. So that was one of the first things. I learned several stress exercises where I do them daily. Um, and they keep my stress level at a lower level, and they impact my parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And they're things you can do anywhere. Um, one of them I do in the car. I'm an hour away from my doctor, and I hate it that my blood pressure is high when I walk in her door. So I now do this exercise the whole time I'm sitting in traffic, and she can't get over how low my pulse is and how much my blood pressure is. That's amazing. And it's called the Dr. Andrew Weil 478 breathing exercise, which you can look up on Google. And you can do it anywhere. And it takes two minutes. And you do it twice a day. And it lowers your stress dramatically so that your body functions properly. Okay. So that was the first thing I researched. So I think I've heard of this before. Is this the one where you, like, hold one side of your nostril, you count the four... And then the no, other that's side. Not a very good exercise, but um, I don't want to be sitting in somebody's lobby holding my nostril when I'm doing breathing. This one's much simpler, and nobody even really knows that you're doing it. You breathe in for four, you hold it for eight, and then you whoosh it out with your tongue up against your teeth. Um, you hold it for seven, you whoosh it out for eight. So it's hold. And then blow out really fast. Okay, okay. You do that three times or four times, twice a day. Okay. And, and that controls your stress. It's kind of amazing. And they've done brain scans and they know that it works. And the second thing you can also look up online that I guess is called a belly button wand. And I don't have, oh, you can't see me anyway. It's a T stick. You put it in your belly button and you jiggle it. And you can actually exercise your organs with it, and it does lower your parasympathetic nervous system. And the concept is that your belly button was the beginning of, of your life. So it is what controls a lot of things going on in your body. And I discovered it at a meeting I had gone to for the leading neurologist at UCLA, and he was doing it, but he had his brainwave machine there. So he started bringing people up out of the audience to try it, and he was blown away because everybody calmed down so significantly. That is so He's funny. A huge believer in the belly button one. And that's another thing when you travel, yeah, you know, these things are, you can do them anywhere. I don't think you want to sit in the lobby and use the belly button one. And jiggle you your belly. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. That is They're so great. funny. You know what, though? I find this stuff very interesting. I feel like that we have entered into this era, um, era of, of changing. You know, there's so many people that are getting sick and things are changing. You know, we know as a society how bad the American diet is, you know, how bad, um, you know, or I'm sorry, how quickly people are getting sick, you know, things that are killing them. And we know you know, that chemo is not necessarily the best answer for cancer, 
because it wrecks your immune system. And so I think that there's a whole lot of information out there. And now I want to tell all of you girls listening, this is absolutely a show for the grocery cart method. You take what you like and you leave the rest. So I even talk about meditation every once in a while where people, you know, think that's kind of woo woo and it's kind of weird, but I use it in the form of prayer because we do talk about God on this podcast. I am a Christian, but I absolutely do not put all of my eggs in one basket when it comes to the medical community. You know, I think that there's a lot of benefit And some of these benefits, you might be sitting there thinking that this is the craziest thing you've ever heard, and there's no way that you're ever doing that. And that is okay. We are here just to show you that there are other options out there, and you can take what you like and use what you need. Because I, on the other side from Cheryl, I don't have any autoimmune diseases, and the only thing that bothers me at this point is that I really just need to get more fiber in my diet. (laughs) So there are different levels of where everybody is. So if this helps you, fantastic. If it's not really for you, that's okay. Maybe it's for someone that you know. I actually uh, went to get my hair done the other day, and my hairstylist was telling me that her sister would be really interested in this. So it's not something for her but she knows someone that it would help. So I just want you girls to listen to what Cheryl has to say with an open mind because I find this stuff completely fascinating. I love it. I'm, I'm such a, like, I don't know, health nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff. Well, and I actually discovered hundreds of toxins in my life, which I then systematically um, removed. Absolutely. And, Let's talk about those, um, too. I went back to school to become a health coach because I want to share all this information now because I didn't even know what I was looking for in the beginning. And now being relatively pain-free, it's fantastic. That's amazing, Cheryl. So but amazing. when I graduated from school, I wrote a book called It Feels Good to Feel Good. Mm-hmm. Learn to Eliminate Toxins, Reverse Your Inflammation, and Feel Great Again. And I wrote it for people with autoimmune disease, but it's really for everyone. And you may not be ready to start making these changes now, but remember that I talked to you about this because it could come in very handy later. Mm -hmm. It ends up we are 37th in the world in health. Wow. And 53% of our children have some kind of chronic illness. Those numbers are awful. are at the root cause of all of those chronic illnesses that we're all struggling with. So it doesn't matter if it's autoimmune or it's cancer or it's Alzheimer's, or it's depression, or it's eczema and psoriasis, all of it leads back to if you lower your toxic load, and each toxin removed is one step closer to lowering your toxic load, as you do that, you start taking steps back to health. Um, So if you're healthy and you don't want to go where I went, then this message is for you, just like if you have autoimmune disease and you want to heal your gut and then heal your health as a result of that by starting to eliminate toxins. And what I didn't understand, and I wish someone hit me over the head with it earlier, is inflammation starts as long as 20 years before it rears its ugly little head up. That is a real so time for you, you not you to know. You think you feel great, mm-hmm. and you may think you're healthy, but you don't know what's going on in your body, and those toxins are not good for right. anybody. Okay, so and tell us what you started with. Pardon me? Tell us what you started with. What kind of stuff did you start to eliminate to begin with? What did you What did you know you needed to get In the beginning, I dug into, which I didn't really understand, the controversy between organic, genetically modified, and conventional produce. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we organic. There is no way you're going to convince me that eating herbicides and pesticides is good for my body. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't understand genetically modified. And there is so much misinformation that that industry is putting out so that we don't understand it. I want to explain it quickly to you. There are really only two kinds of genetically modified foods. People will say to you, oh, foods have been engineered since the beginning of time, and that's all true. But those are not genetically modified foods. Genetically modified means they have done something to that plant that would never have happened to it in nature. Never. So there's two things that they do to it. The first is they put Bt toxin right into the plant. 
Mm-hmm. And he talks in more insect pieces, it blows up his little stomach, and so he doesn't eat the plant. Well, that sounds all ducky, except for, number one, it's blowing up our bees and our butterflies. And if we don't pollinate our food, we don't have food. Mm-hmm. And secondly, it's blowing up all the good bugs in our gut. So, in BT toxin is the gift that keeps on giving. It gets in your gut and it replicates. So, this toxin that is killing bugs and killing your good bugs is duplicating itself in your system, making you sick. So, that's the first kind of genetically modified. <laughs> okay. The second kind of genetically modified actually has gotten a little easier to explain because it's where they make uh, vegetables and fruits, what's called Roundup Ready. And if you've been watching the news, you know that about two months ago, there was a $290 million lawsuit against Monsanto, who makes Roundup, that they lost. And for the very first time, the attorneys got a hold in discovery of all of their records and discovered that Monsanto has known for at least 20 years that they've been poisoning us and causing cancer in our body. And the man who took them to suit um, something malfunctioned with his suit while he was spraying in his schoolyard, and he now has um, lymphoma and probably won't live long enough to spend the money he just won, but he wanted to protect other people from having that happen to them. So if it's Roundup Ready, it means that this chemical is being put on the vegetables in this category in such massive amounts that um, it's making wheat give you more wheat because it shocks the plant. And, I mean, no bug or herbicide or anything wants to attack that plant, but it's causing all kinds of havoc because it's so toxic when it gets into our body. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, you're not going to convince me that herbicides or pesticides are good for my body because they're not. So, And you cannot wash it off. When these things are tested... For toxicity, they are already scrubbed four times. And what you can get lists of all the toxins that are put on our conventional produce, which is even kind of the category between organic and genetically modified. That if it's uh, there's something called the dirty dozen clean 15 card. I've heard of this. The dirty dozen side, you want to make sure that you buy it organic if it's on the clean 15, it doesn't matter. Now, these are not genetically modified things. Um, these are things that are grown with tons of pesticides and herbicides. A potato has 37 different pesticides and herbicides on it. Um, strawberries are number one on the list because they're close to the ground, so they get attacked by bugs, so they are heavily um, sprayed with pesticides and herbicides. So you need to know what's on that list. And if you go to my website, it's posted under free stuff. So you can take a look at it, run a copy of it, put it in your purse, take it when you go grocery shopping. Okay. You really want to avoid the things on the dirty dozen side of the car mm-hmm. because they cause havoc in your body. Yeah. Okay, so that's the Girls, first place to clean it up. I will put all of Cheryl's information in the show notes. So I know a lot of you listen while you're working out or driving. So all the information, you know, you don't have to write it down now. We'll put it all in the show notes for your convenience when you're ready. Um, Cheryl, I have heard of the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen before. And quite a few years ago, for no other reason than just health, um, I started buying as much food organic as I possibly could. And I try hard to stay away from conventional food. Now, I will not sit here and talk badly about my husband, but he is someone who doesn't necessarily, I guess, buy into all of the hype like I do as far as what's organic and that kind of thing. So because we are women here on the podcast, most of us that listen are women I think the women are usually the ones who are responsible for food shopping. And I know that when a lot of us hear the word organic, um, we automatically think price tag, you know, that organic food is more expensive. And I feel like I have two schools of thought with this for number one, organic food now or medical bills later. Okay. And then my second school of thought is that you can price compare 
almost anywhere. And the difference, I realize that everyone is on a budget, but you can price compare so many places. There are coupons available. And like I said, I know that it's not easy, but once you actually start and you get into doing it, then it, then you don't have to do the research anymore. It becomes easier and you know what you're getting and you know where it comes from. Um, I have had people argue with me before about organic versus local. You know, the organic might come from Mexico and obviously you're taking a lot of time and loss of nutrients by the time you get it to your house. After it's picked and then it's to your house, there's a whole lot of nutrition loss by the time you get it. But you buy local, you might get all of that nutrition. But if you're not buying organic local, then you're getting nutrition, sure. You might be getting more, but you're also getting all of the junk that comes with it, all of the pesticides. So you really have to decide on your own what it's going to be for you and your family. And I started thinking, um, I've told you um, girls before that my daughter struggles with asthma and allergies. My son has a few allergies, but I feel like we're starting to slowly learn how all of these things work. And even though the organic was a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit more expensive than the conventional, my children were more important to me. Now, I'm not judging you, and I'm not saying that your children are not important to you, but for me and my family, I made that decision, and I'm happy with it every day. I feel good about what I'm feeding my kids. Now, they don't always feel good about it because they like crackers, um, but they will appreciate it later on in life. Well, and the second thing, once you get to the organic versus GMO versus conventional is to avoid fast food and processed food. Most processed food has genetically modified in it, um, and it's loaded with synthetic ingredients. So my rule is, if I can't pronounce it or I don't know what it is, I don't buy it. It's that simple. Start to learn to read labels. And what kinds of things do I not understand? Things like natural flavors, which could be a whole variety of things, but it's often MSG, and I think most of us know that MSG is not good for us, so they now put MSG as an ingredient under 39 different names. Wow. So that you don't know you're getting MSG, and it's a neurotoxin, so you don't want it, and it often is hidden under that natural flavorings. So if there's anything on that label that you don't know what it is, or it sounds like it's got a long chemical name, it is a synthetic thing that gives your body no nourishment. And so, really, you should avoid it. <clears throat> now, there are some processed foods. I still buy, I buy an organic tomato pasta sauce that only has three or four ingredients on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are things I buy that are processed. But the majority of them, I now cook mm -hmm. because then I can control what goes into my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I know what goes into my food. And if we go out to dinner, I call the restaurant ahead of time. I ask them questions so that I know if I can eat there or what kinds of ingredients they're going to use. It means you take the whole thing real seriously. And do you want to do this? Well, it's kind of like you do it now or you pay it later. Because as we're 37th in the world in health for a reason. Mm -hmm. And it's because we're eating all these chemicals that are doing our bodies harm. Right. So um, you don't have to do it all at once. Just start to slowly lower your toxic load mm -hmm. and you can be healthier as a result of that. And when you can't, like, are you going to buy local or are you going to buy organic and it comes from um, chili? Those are things you do the best you can. Exactly. Uh, you don't make yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. You don't get all twisty about it. You do the best you can to put the most high-quality food into your body that you can. Because exactly. the body is like a computer. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. I feel like that I strive to do the best that I can, and I leave the rest up to God. That's just the only thing that you can do. Because this stuff is it, its such a serious topic that I feel like that, you know, you could easily drive yourself crazy, like you said, because um, I actually did the Whole30 diet um, for the 30 days, 
And I really honestly loved the food. Like it was amazing. Um, but it was very difficult to live by like on an all the time regular basis. And, and that's what they say, even in the whole 30 book, that this is a 30 day like restart. It's a refresh. It's not a lifetime type of diet. And so it just gives you, you know, a new path to start down to make better choices after the 30 days are over. But I think for the majority of us, we have heard things about corn and soy. But the truth is, is that corn and soy are right around 92 and 94 percent GMO. Um, there is hardly any at all organic, um, fresh, you know, soy and corn. And so when you're on the Whole30 diet, you're not allowed to have soy. And so anytime that we would go out to eat through that whole month, it was so hard. Now, we're not even talking about organic. I'm just talking about soy in general because it is yeah. in almost everything. And so when we would try to go out, I literally only found two places that I could even eat with my Whole30 restrictions and one of them was a Mexican restaurant. And even still, I had to ask them to cook my food because I would order fajitas and I would ask them to cook my food without oil because the oil that they put on the flat top is a mixture of olive oil and soy. Everything is a mixture because the mixtures are cheaper. So you have to pay attention to that stuff. You know, I'm like, if you're a relatively healthy person, like Cheryl said, you don't want to drive yourself crazy. You do the best that you can. But if you are someone who actually has like a specific problem and you need to pay attention to it all the time, then that's something that you need to start looking towards because they mix everything because it's cheaper. So even if it's not, even if you, you know, eat out every once in a while and that's not really a big deal for you, that's fine. But knowing what you're getting yourself into is important. Yeah, this is, it's really all about awareness. I am uh, now down over 50 podcasts because I want to share with people what I learned because I was appalled at mm -hmm. how many toxins were in my life. They were in all categories of my food. They were in my cosmetics. I was using a very expensive brand of French cosmetic, and it was a 9 on a 10-point scale. Wow. And you actually can look all this stuff up on the Environmental Working Group's website, okay. ewg.org, mm -hmm. and they have databases of hundreds of thousands of items that you can look up what you're using and find out just how toxic it is. Very it's not necessarily easy to go and all around in there, mm -hmm. but it's worth the time. And that's why I wrote the book. I identified what I found toxic in my life and what I replaced it with mm -hmm. so that you have a running start if you want one um, of the things that I discovered. And then I tell you how to research. So if you don't like my choices, you can go find others that are better for you. We yeah. are all different. Different things, like I, I just turned 70. My makeup is not going to be the right makeup for you if you're 30. So there are ways that you can go into their database and look up the things that you want to find. And there are more organic and healthy products coming out almost every day now. It's because it's we just know. But it's happening. Yeah, we know what, you know what has been harming us for so long that people are asking for a change. And I think that the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the community, the uh, economy rather is, you know, they're changing towards what the people want. We don't want to be sick any longer. Um, so Cheryl, I want to ask you just to give the girls an idea. Um, I think you told me yesterday, um, how long did it really take you to eliminate these toxins? Because this is not something as we know, that's going to happen overnight. And so how long did it take you to kind of give the girls a time frame? It took me five years. Okay. So see, yeah. girls, so that's a while. Like, you don't you know? make yourself crazy. Exactly. Like, um, I think you said the other day, you can't just throw everything out that you've bought because you would go broke. So right. it's a process of getting that. healthy. She also almost lost her marriage because she threw out all his favorite food. Mm -hmm. So you don't do that. You don't dictate to somebody else what you're going to do. You have a conversation and explain it. And then it's one at a time. And you find the replacement product first, 
And then when you run out of the old product, you replace it so that it's all a natural flow. You're not spending any extra money. Mm -hmm. And um, if you were to buy my book, I'd send you a workbook. Mm -hmm. So that as you read the book, you write down what you find that was toxic in my life that's in your life. And what you want to replace it with when you run out of it. So that it's the same process, but you're taking little steps every day to get rid of your toxic load. Very good. Okay, so you you let's just go over a few categories here. You started paying attention to the toxins that were in your food, in your cosmetics, in my guessing, water. Okay, in your water. I put a filter on my kitchen sink right away, and I don't drink anything out of plastic water anymore, out of plastic bottles. Not only is that water less regulated than the crud that's coming through your faucet, but the plastic is leaching chemicals into it that are also making you sick. So I bought stainless steel bottles. I fill them up before I leave for the day. I have enough that will get me through the day, and I have stainless steel jugs to refill them if I need it. But I don't use, I will never buy another plastic bottle of water. And if you think Flint, Michigan is an unusual situation, it's the worst but there are cities all over America that have all kinds of crud in their water. And you can get a water report right from your water department to see what's in yours. But it includes pharmaceuticals that people put down the toilet and arsenic and atrazine and all the chemicals that are being sprayed on our crops. All of that's going into our tap water. Mm-hmm. So you, you need to be cognizant of what's in your water and how to get as much of that out as possible. Mm-hmm. So tell me real quickly, what kind of filter do you have on your faucet? Um, I have now put in an entire home system, but it's from Aquasana. Okay. And it takes the majority of the toxins out of the water. You can go berserk. There's a system that will even make your water alkaline or acid, and you use the acid to clean your house, and you use the alkaline to drink. But it's thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. And you, don't, you need to get as many of the toxins out as you can. So buying an aquasana system is a more sane way to do that. The under the sink um, version, I think, is $180. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I didn't want the toxins coming through my skin. I take a bath every night. So that's why we decided to put a full house system on or, yeah. or from the shower. Yeah, I actually do. Um, now, we personally, we have a great water filter. Um, we spent a lot of money on it years ago. We've had it for like 13-ish years. And I, I really do love our filter. Um, it's actually super creepy. When you change the filter, the filter goes in white and it comes out cardboard brown. It's super gross. But something that we don't have is we don't have a home system filter. And it's something that I have definitely thought about, you know, as the years have gone on. You know, you're drinking the healthy water from your filter, but your skin is your largest organ. And I'm still sitting in the bathtub. I'm still taking showers every day. I'm still brushing my teeth with the sink water upstairs, not from the filter that's downstairs. So there, there is a multitude of craziness that you can get into when it comes to eliminating these things and, and being healthy and stuff. But like Cheryl said, girls, just, you know, every so often, you know, every little bit, it does take time to get these things um, out and gone. So don't go crazy. And it doesn't just... matter where you start. I mean, your home cleaning supplies right. are toxic. You can start anywhere because the idea is to lower your toxic load. So it doesn't matter if you start, if you don't want to spend the money on organic, start somewhere else. But start to eliminate the toxins that are in your life. And um, the most toxic thing in your house are the pods that you do your laundry or your dishes in. If a toddler was to eat one of those, you probably couldn't even get into an emergency. So you need to start being cognizant of what are you buying and what's the risk. If you have small children, you certainly don't want the pods around. Um, and the, and there's, there are products out there that you can replace them with and still clean your laundry just fine and still wash your dishes perfectly. Um, fabric softener is... All synthetic, very harmful to the body, and the, the fragrances, all the fragrances, whether it's your fabric softener or the one that takes all the fragrances out of the air or your perfume or whatever, those are synthetic smells. Yes. And they're causing you harm. Mm-hmm. So um, you want to eliminate as many of those as possible. I have a diffuser. I buy um, 
essential oils. Oh, girl, yeah. I love the oils. That's a good infuser that takes care of any odor in my house, and it's lovely. Um, and I might use a little lavender oil on my skin if I want to have smell different. Mm-hmm. But you don't need all that stuff, and it's not doing you any favors. I will tell uh, you real quickly, we're, we're actually running out of time here, girls. I want Cheryl to um, give you her last bit of info. But real quick, I went to the store looking for my daughter, a lotion. Um, she gets those those cracks in the corner of her mouth in the wintertime. Her skin gets real dry. And so I always am trying to get her to put lotion on them. And I went to the store looking for like a healthier type lotion. Let me tell you, I found zero zero. I went home and I looked up on Pinterest an essential oils recipe and everything that I made for her, I know exactly what ingredients went into that lotion. I used um, organic oils and uh, all like, cause you know, the base oil, the carrier oil is always like an olive oil, avocado, you know, something. So all of the oils that went into that lotion They were organic. I know where they came from. I know how many ingredients went into it. And then I used the beater and I whipped it up and it smells good. And it's seriously almost like icing. It is awesome. And you know what? It was gone. Like in two, two and a half days, I just kept continually having her put it on the cracks of her mouth. Now, it's not a perfect system. You still have to do it, you know, when the cracks come back. It's just like aging products. If you stop using them, you know, like you still have right. to do it. But I couldn't find anything that I was happy with from the store. I had to make my own. So there are some adjustments to be made. And honestly, I was happy to make them. And if they buy that, they want to talk. They sound overwhelming. I want people to say, oh, you can't do them. It's overwhelming. Really, it's not. You just slowly keep replacing things. Until the toxins are gone. Exactly. And your body will vote. Um, I have a theory that most of us are running around not even paying attention to the fact that we don't feel good. I didn't. And so you need to tune in with your body and you need to listen to it. And when you start eating organic and eliminating the toxins in all phases of your life, your body starts to tell you how terrific it feels. Mm-hmm. And all honesty, I feel better than I did in my 50s and I turned 70 two weeks ago. That's fantastic. So um, listen to your body, pay attention to it, and don't let anybody tell you if you have some kind of illness that you're going to live with it for the rest of your life because that is not necessarily the truth. That's and right. Keep searching and owning your own health and finding solutions that work for you because you're worth it. Very good. Okay, Cheryl, so we're going to finish up here. And I did not tell you this in advance because I always try to surprise my guests. But um, I do want you to tell all of the girls where they can find you and where they can find all of your information. And then after that, I'm going to ask you two questions that you need to come off of the cuff and answer for me. Okay? Oh, not a problem. You can find me. I call myself a muse. So I am Cheryl with a C, Emma Health Muse. Um, dot com is my website. At gmail.com is my email address. So it's Cheryl M. Health Muse. If you go to my website, there is a ton of great information there. So go noodle around, and there's all kinds of free information that you can download there. And then take a look at my blogs. Little things like, um, are you having a hard time sleeping? Are you, are you having a problem losing weight? When I started changing how I eat, I lost 50 pounds. My husband lost 70. Wow. We didn't diet. We just started eating real food. It's that's amazing. awesome. So that's where you can find me. I'm also on Facebook at Cheryl and Health Views, and I have a page about toxins called It Feels Good to Feel Good. So I keep those two parts of my Facebook identity a little bit separate mm-hmm. so that as more information comes out and it changes all the time, you can get updated by following me on Facebook. Okay, very good. Well, congratulations for making yourself feel better and not just taking what everyone else told you at face value and going to search for your own health and happiness. I am so glad that we were able to have you on the show today. And so before we go, um, I do a segment at the end of every episode called the crowning moment of the week and the flop moment of the week. And this is just so that everybody knows that none of us are perfect, that we all have flaws, and it is just for a little bit of fun. 
And so I would like for you to tell me this week, if you can think, I'll give you a second to think, what was your crowning moment, something that you achieved or did well this week, and then something that was a flop that was pretty awful. Um, I'll give you a quick example. Um, my flop one day was that I completely dropped my water bottle at the gym and I spilled water all over the entire floor. And I was just standing there like not knowing what to do because I couldn't find anything to clean it up with. So I was just standing there like a goober with water all around me. So it's nothing serious, just something a little fun and silly. Oh, I've got a great flop for you. I am running a sugar detox online through the Learning Center at the Lomas University. And you go online an hour before the class starts and upload your PowerPoint. And then your, all the people who have joined your class are there and you can all talk with each other. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't get my PowerPoint to upload. <laughs> and so everybody started coming on and I couldn't get my PowerPoint to upload. So I decided that I was going to reboot. I told everybody to hold on. And I shut down my computer and rebooted and lost my internet connection. So they all sat there waiting for to come back, and I couldn't because I couldn't get online at all. It just went downhill from there. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's rescheduled. We're going to do the class on Friday. God love them. They supported each other since I wasn't there. Nice. Recipes and we got the sugar detox. It's an addiction. Oh, yeah. So yes. you get sick. So they were helping each other with a lot of stuff. This point I need that. That's so awesome. So they all had a great time when they were going to get together Friday. So I want to talk to them about pregnancy. Yes. Well, thank you very much, technology. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Okay. So and now the crowning moment. Um, this is a really good week because I'm doing a lot of podcasts. And the more people that I can reach with my message, the happier I am. So I love doing this. And I have, this is my third podcast this week, and I have one tomorrow and one on Saturday. Oh, that's so great. It's getting easier to find podcasts to do because I've done so many. That's and awesome. I really want you all to know what's in my head to <laughs> help you live healthier lives. Well, we absolutely appreciate all of your information and insight, and we're so glad to have you. Girls, you can find all of Cheryl's information again in the show notes. And I am so glad that all of you were here with me and with Cheryl this week. Thank you so much for being with us. I am always so appreciative when you listen to the podcast. And until next week, girls, adventure on. Thank you for having me. Love being here.